Hello, my name is Florian and I am your PLC coach. You are watching the first video of my PLC online course. In this course, I will show you how to program a Siemens PLC step by step. I don't want to waste your time, so let's jump right in. Every journey begins with a single step. In this video, I want to show you what a PLC, a programmable logic controller, actually is. So, what is a PLC? The answer to this question is very simple. This is a PLC. What you see here is a Siemens Simatic S7-1200 controller, a PLC used for small to medium-sized machines. Its big brother, the Simatic S7-1500, is a PLC used for more advanced applications. If you have never seen a real PLC before, you probably want to know its size. Here is a small comparison. The guy in the middle is your highly qualified teacher. I'm a big fan of simplifying things. The best and easiest definition for a PLC is the following. A PLC is a small computer that controls machines. And a machine could be almost anything. Let's take a look at a few examples. PLCs are often used in automotive production lines for various tasks. You can also find them in the oil and gas industry as well as in the energy sector. PLCs control machines that produce food and beverages. The production and packaging of medicines is also managed by PLCs. From simple applications like conveyor belts to complex operations like controlling a nuclear power plant, PLCs are everywhere. They are also used in buildings and in the field of transportation. And of course, you can use your new PLC skills to take your model train to a whole new level. Now that you know what a PLC is and its various applications, let's connect theory to practice. In this demonstration you will see two PLCs side by side. On the left we have a Siemens controller and on the right a PLC from Vago. They may look different, but they serve the same purpose, controlling machines. Unfortunately I don't have access to real industrial machines at home. But we will use these impressive training models instead. Here you see a small conveyor belt paired with a punching station. In my courses, I work a lot with training models and practical simulations. This makes learning enjoyable and ensures success. You can now take a few seconds to relax and watch our model in action. You have now seen our small machine in action. The next question is, how is a PLC doing that? How does a PLC actually work? Let's take a deeper look. The job of a PLC is to control a machine. For this purpose, the PLC needs sensors. Sensors are the eyes and ears of a PLC. In our model, you will find four different sensors. Two light barriers detect the position of components on the conveyor belt, while limit switches indicate the upper and lower position of the punching station. The sensors are connected to the PLC's so-called inputs. These connections are made through wires allowing the sensors to send data to the PLC. In our model, we exclusively use digital sensors, which can only represent two signal states. These sensors transmit either 0 volt or 24 volt DC to the PLC, which we refer to as a binary 0 or 1 signal. You can check the current status of the sensors using the input LEDs located on the upper side of the PLC. We have now learned that sensors send data to the PLC. 
And what do you think the PLC does with this information? In fact, the PLC does nothing with this data on its own. Our PLC is actually quite dumb. We, the PLC programmers, give the controller its intelligence by creating a PLC program. Siemens provides the programming software TIA Portal for this purpose. In the TIA Portal, we create a project, write the program and then download it to the device. After that, the PLC knows how to process the information from the sensors. Our goal is to control the so-called actuators of the model. Actuators are the muscles of the PLC. This includes the conveyor belt motor as well as the motor of the punching station. The actuators are wired to the outputs of the PLC. You can recognize the status of the outputs by the output LEDs on the lower side of the PLC. When an output is activated, the corresponding LED lights up. I understand that we have covered a lot of information today. Now let's recap what we've learned. The job of a PLC is to control machines. To do this, the PLC requires sensors. Sensors are the eyes and ears of a PLC. This includes, for example, limit switches and light barriers. The sensors are wired to the inputs of the PLC. Through the wire, the sensors send data to the PLC. Our PLC is a dump device. It does not know how to process the data from the sensors. We first need to create a PLC program. For this purpose, we use the TIA portal. After we've uploaded the project to the controller, the PLC knows how to process the information from the sensors. Depending on the program we have created, the PLC controls the outputs. The outputs are wired to the actuators of the machine. This can be, for example, a motor. If you have understood this, then I have good news for you. You have what it takes to become a PLC programmer. And as your PLC coach, I am excited to show you the incredible opportunities that await you in the world of automation. If you want to learn more, let's dive right into the next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're excited to dive deeper into PLC programming, visit my website at plccoach.com. See you in the next video.